Taoiseach, um, I've run out of words to describe the horror being inflicted in Gaza by Israel. I've run out of words to describe how cruel it is. Israel's stated aim is the elimination of Hamas, but its relentless and indiscriminate attacks don't discern between innocent people and Hamas fighters. More than 18,000 people have now been slaughtered, 75% of them women and children. I want to read into the record of this house a recent report from journalist Belle True on the scenes inside the European hospital in Khan Yunus. A badly burned toddler screaming for the mother he doesn't know is dead and screaming because doctors don't have enough painkillers to relieve his suffering. An eight-year-old boy whose brain is exposed as bombing damaged parts of his skull. A teenage girl, her eye surgically removed because every bone in her face is smashed. A three-year-old double amputee whose severed limbs are laid out in a pink box beside him. Taoiseach, none of us can say we didn't know what was happening. I don't know how the leaders of self-professed civilised countries who have abstained or voted against a ceasefire in the UN can live with their decisions. They have the blood of thousands of innocent people on their hands. Taoiseach, four weeks ago, when I asked you to push for trade sanctions against Israel at EU level, you told me then that you would seek legal advice. Every week since then, you said that you didn't have that advice yet. This is despite the fact that most people wouldn't think you'd need a legal expert to tell you what is very obvious to everyone, that Israel is in breach of the Human Rights Clause. I was therefore interested to hear that on Monday at the EU Foreign Affairs Council, the Taunish asked the EU Commission to examine if Israel was in breach of the Human Rights Clause of the EU-Israel Trade Agreement. Am I to assume your lawyers have at last provided you with the advice? Taoiseach, the letter to the EU Council President that you co-signed with the Prime Minister of Belgium, Malta and Spain calls for the EU to act and states that its credibility is now at stake. I'm genuinely glad to see you take that stance. However, I regret to inform you that the credibility of the EU on this is long gone, as is its moral authority. Tisha, can you clarify if you've received the legal advice you promised to get four weeks ago? And is it now the position of the Irish government that multilateral trade sanctions at EU level should be imposed on Israel? Thank you, Deputy Kearns. Tisha, please. Thanks. Thanks very much, Deputy. Um, <clears throat> the current situation in Gaza uh, is intolerable. Uh, it's unacceptable to us. Uh, over 18,000 people killed so far, uh, many of them children. Uh, the majority of the population of Gaza, about 2 million people dis displaced. Um, the death toll is shocking and the relentless bombings and killing of innocent civilians must end. Uh, that's why I'll be making the case uh, and will continue to make the case in Brussels and elsewhere uh, for an immediate and lasting ceasefire uh, so the humanitarian aid can get into Gaza, uh, so that hostages can be released, so the people who want to leave, citizens of third countries, are able to do so. Uh, and I'll continue to make the case that Europe needs to change its position in relation to Israel and Palestine to be less passive uh, and to push and demand for a two-state solution in the way that we haven't done in the past. And I'll be making that case strongly uh, with colleagues uh, on Thursday and Friday. In relation to trade matters, uh, the political and legal advice is clear, Deputy, uh, that trade is an uh, exclusive competence of the European Union and decisions made in relation to trade uh, and sanctions can only be made on the basis of consensus or unanimity. Uh, so, so long as there are, is even one or even two EU countries that don't want to impose trade sanctions, it's not open to us to do so. And that is the clear political fact for anyone who reads the treaties and also the legal advice for anyone uh, who, who wishes to interrogate it. Um, in terms of the UN vote yesterday, uh, I do believe it is significant uh, and we welcome it. Uh, nearly 200 countries in the world uh, over 150 uh, voting for a ceasefire yesterday in New York. Uh, only 10 countries now uh, siding with Israel. Uh, and what we're seeing unfolding in Gaza uh, is an absolute disaster for the Palestinian people. And they are experiencing uh, such terrible suffering. Uh, and I don't mean the mass terrorists, I mean the civilians. And the majority of people being killed are civilians. And the majority of them are women and children. 
Uh, I also think it's a disaster for Israel uh, because this will not bring them security. It won't bring them peace. And they are very quickly losing uh, support and sympathy all around the world. Uh, even their closest ally, the United States, uh, I believe, uh, is beginning to have second thoughts uh, about what they're seeing unfolding in Gaza. And that is a strategic disaster for Israel, in my view. They're making a huge mistake. It's not just about the humanitarian suffering that's being imposed on people in Palestine. What the Israeli government is doing is jeopardizing the long-term and medium-term security of the Israeli people. You should, Deputy Kearns. Tishuk, week after week, when I ask you these questions, you over and over again explain to me what multilateral sanctions are um, and why they're the only effective form of sanction. For a month now, I've been calling for those sanctions. EU sanctions are multilateral ones. So there's no need for you to come in every single week to try to explain to me over and over again what they are. That is what I'm calling for. Not only is it somewhat patronizing, it's also a waste of time. And most of all, you then don't answer the question. I'll ask you again, did you get the legal advice on the human rights clause in the EU-Israel trade agreement that you said you would get four weeks ago? Yeah, the, the, thanks, Deputy. Yeah, the answer is yes. The legal advice is that trade is an EU competence uh, that's suspending the EU-Israel uh, Association <coughs> Agreement and imposing any form of trade sanctions can only be done uh, on a Europe-wide basis, and that requires consensus or unanimity, all 27 member states. Um, that is the position. Uh, that's a political fact. Uh, it's also the legal advice, Deputy, uh, and I'm happy to clarify that. Um, again, I think in this chamber, not sure quite how many times I have now. Um, we do believe that the time has come uh, for uh, sanctions to be taken with regard to uh, activities um, particularly in the West Bank. Uh, the Tanjta has been liaising with a number of other member states in regard to this. Um, one thing we want to do, and work is being done on this, uh, is to impose restrictions and travel bans, uh, particularly on uh, Israeli settlers, uh, those who are, um, those who are uh, uh, causing huge difficulty for, for Palestinian population uh, in the West Bank. Um, Deputy, again, trade sanctions, EU competence, <coughs> EU treaties, the law, unanimity. That's the only way it can be done. Thank you, Tishuk. Are you calling? Deputy, Deputy, please. please. We don't need commentary. We don't. Sorry, Deputy Smith, you're out of order. 